the idea for this book really started for me in um, about 2011. And it came from uh, a luncheon that occurred at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, in which, in an attempt to reach out to a broader range of people uh, to get them more interested in the museum, they hosted a celebration of the models who had been at Versailles, the American models. And out of some three dozen American models who had been there, about 10 of them were African American. And that was really unusual for that time and in fact would be unusual today. And in celebrating their story, I learned a little bit more about the actual event, which I'd heard about in bits and pieces over the course of my reporting, just talking to designers. But the, the Battle of Versailles began in the mind of a publicist named Eleanor Lambert. And she was one part dictator and one part P.T. Barnum. And she really believed in American design. And at the time, American design was very much the stepchild in the fashion world. All great ideas emanated from Paris. They came down from the couture houses and they slowly trickled down to the average person. And you know, today I, I sort of chuckle because oftentimes people will look at the pictures that come out of Fashion Week and they will complain that, oh, you know, these designers, they're trying to dictate this, they're trying to dictate that. And I always explain to them that, you know, today women have an enormous range of choices in what they can wear. In 1973 and in the years preceding that, particularly in the post-war years, there was very little choice. If you chose not to engage in fashion, you were simply choosing to opt out of society. You were choosing to opt out of our culture because fashion was really controlled. And the Americans really took their marching orders from what happened in Paris. <clears throat> but Eleanor Lambert really believed in American designers. She believed that they had talent, that they had creativity, and she wanted them to have as much attention on the world stage as their European counterparts. So she hatched an idea when an opportunity arose. And that was the curator of Versailles was raising money for its restoration. And the two of them were friends. And one day he said to her, do you have any ideas on how I could really you know, put together a fundraiser? And she said, well, all I can really think of is, you know, maybe putting on a fashion show. And he agreed. And lo and behold, as that fashion show came together, the five American designers who were chosen to participate were all of her clients. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and the five French designers were, of course, the great lions of the French fashion industry. Before I tell you who the designers were, I want to just give you a little sense of the lay of the land. In 1973, or just prior to that, the culture was changing in fits and starts. Women were moving into the workforce and establishing careers and not just holding down jobs. 1973 brought sexual upheaval. Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion in the United States. Hillary Clinton graduated from law school. The country had just survived the 1968 riots. Paris had come through its own turmoil in the 1960s and was all captured in the kinds of clothing that we were wearing. The five French designers that were chosen were all engaged in couture, although some of them were just starting to venture into ready to wear. They were Yves Saint Laurent, Hubert de Givenchy, is my French great, Pierre Cardin, <laughs> Emmanuel Ongaro, and Christian Dior's Marc Bohan, a pretty stellar group of people. The American designers were Oscar de la Renta, Bill Blass, Halston, Anne Klein, and Stephen Burroughs. They were, to say the least, a motley crew. Halston was essentially the first sort of celebrity designer. He had established a reputation for dressing some of the biggest stars of the day, Elizabeth Taylor, Liza Minnelli, and during the course of the preparations for the show, he took to referring to himself in the third person, which, mm -hmm. of course, everyone loves when people do that. 
<laughs> and then there was Bill Glass and was Oscar De La Renta. And both of them came out of uh, the back room, so to speak. They had been working uh, with manufacturers and with other design houses whose jobs were to, in fact, copy French fashion. And they had just begun to establish themselves as independent designers with their names on their label. And then there was Anne Klein, the only woman. No one wanted her to participate, not the French and not the Americans. She was designing sportswear, separates, and everyone thought that was the bottom of the barrel of fashion. The French looked down on it, the Americans thought she would just be a disaster and she would weigh down their show. It also happened that she was financially the most successful of the American designers. So there was a little jealousy going on there. And then there was Stephen Burroughs, and he was the new kid on the block. He was only about 30 years old 